Darrell. Hi, How yeah. are you? And Very good, thank you. It's an opportunity now for us to talk to you about your aspirations and your vision for Ball and Fit and where you want to take it. And most importantly, I think, from what you've been able to achieve in the last five years. So tell, tell me a little bit about what you personally have been able to achieve as well as what Ball and Fit's been able to achieve in the last five years. Great, thank you. So um, Ball and Fit um, started in 2017. And what it was, was I've been teaching dance sport for many years, many decades. Um, and my dad went very ill. Um, he had pancreatic cancer and he passed away in 2017. And I was absolutely in awe of the silver chain people and the care that he got. Um, and it made me want to change direction with my own work. Um, so I felt before that I'd been fairly egotistical. I'd really concentrated on improving good dancers. Um, but what I wanted to do was actually give people opportunities that hadn't had opportunities before. Um, and that was really my motivation behind starting Ball and Fit. Um, and what I, what I wanted to do was actually um, initially start with seniors, um, which I did do. Uh, and then I was given an opportunity through dance sport with their um, come and try day for the para dance, um, and I went in that direction, and that just exploded into all the other um, genres that Bore Fit's now involved in. Um, one door just opened after the next, after the next. Um, so what started as just a small, you know, a small thing has actually grown into the main part of my business now. For sure. So the paradigm side of things, tell me a little bit about that and what achievements you personally have made as well as achievements for Australia that have been made. Great. Well, paradigms I'm really motivated about. Um, so we started paradigms back in 2018 with a Come and Try Day, um, which was organised through um, Dance Sport WA. Um, and from that humble Come and Try Day, we have gone, I think, now to three or four Australian Dance Sport Championships, I think four actually, um, and we've taken a team of about four or five or six every year across to the Australian Dance Sport Championships, but also we've now gone international. Uh, we took a team of two dancers, plus a um, team coach, plus a um, team manager to Japan, and that was a fantastic uh, experience for us first. And then we also uh, were able to go to the World Championships uh, where we took a, a couple, which was Danny and myself, and then we had you as the team manager, we had Judy Pegas as the team coach, and we went across and was just wowed by the world's best. Yeah, and but most importantly, we represented Australia on the world stage. We did, for the very first time. It was great to have Australia there, and it was acknowledged about, you know, Australia's here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So what is, what, is your, what is your vision for the future of that particular, the international dancing side of things? Well, what I would really want to do is actually get more involved with the international side of it. Um, I feel that we've got a lot to learn. We've got a lot to learn about how to develop our dancers. Um, as a coach, there's a lot to learn. Um, and so that we can actually compete on an international stage. I would like to, um, in 2023, take a larger team across to an international event. Yep. Um, we haven't chosen that event yet, but we'll, get, um, we'll choose that event and then we'll get behind the team some fundraising. Fantastic. So we can get the team across. I also know that you also have a lot to do with the Special Olympics. Tell us a little bit about the Special Olympics and the involvement of Ball and Fit in that. Great, thank you. So Special, uh, the Ball and Fit is an affiliate with the Special Olympics and we work hand in hand with the Special Olympics. We were very fortunate that the Special Olympics had some um, grants um, some years ago where they were able to offer courses for free. And so what it was, was we were able to do some courses within the dancing for people to come and try. Um, and from that, we've been able to retain people. And now it's a, um, it's a, a fee for service, um, but we've been able to retain. We have, over the last two years, had three competitions. Yep. And we had an initial one, which was a, um, a development competition. We didn't give our prizes. We just had people come and perform because we had to get used to the Special Olympics dance rules, which is more like, so you think you can dance or dance from the stars, one on the floor at a time. 
we got our head around those rules and then we had a local competition and we also had a state games last year. And how do you think the participants enjoyed those programs? I think it's a fantastic um, set of rules and, and, and way to actually showcase dancing. Having the dancers on the floor by themselves to music of their choice, doing a dance of their choice, means they absolutely shine and they've got the audience's attention. And I know they really enjoy that. Fantastic. And they would be feel very empowered as well. Most definitely, most definitely. And they just have that degree of confidence because they know the dance, it's their favourite dance, choosing dancing music that they find really motivating. Yeah. What do you think are the barriers to actually making greater achievements in both the paradigm side of things as well as the Special Olympics? I've got to say we, we definitely need to change the culture around boys in dancing. So one of the problems we do have is that we've got um, a good participation from the girls, but we don't have a good participation from the boys. So we definitely need to have a culture shift that dancing can be for boys as well, that it's not just limited to, the, to, to girls. And also I think just an awareness that now there is these paths with dance sport, the dance sport has opened up the opportunities for people with all sorts of different backgrounds to take part in dancing. Thank you. And very in the last final thing I'd like to ask you is we are both on um, the commission for Dance Sport Australia yes. for the disability side of things. Mm -hmm. So what is your vision for that? What I would really like to see us be able to do through the commission is have this um, extended into other states. So we've, we've got a, a, a terrific program that's working here in WA. The other states don't necessarily have the same program. There's a few people that might be doing things, but it's not to the same degree. And what I would like to see is through our involvement within the commission, that we have come and try days in other states, we have development days in other states, and we uh, allow other people to see the opportunity that there are there for their dance schools um, to be able to encompass other people that may not normally uh, go into a, a, a dance school environment. Yeah. And I know Judy Peggs is the chairman of that group. It's a very small group at the moment. Yeah. And I know that Judy has the same sort of vision. So I think that's going to be a very exciting, in the next, I guess, five, ten years, it's going to yes. be very exciting. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think the time has come. There's a, a movement within most sports bodies um, to make their sports more inclusive. Yep. Um, and there's a lot of government support to do that. Um, and I think, yeah, dance sport has um, got the opportunity there to be able to really grow. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Daryl. That was terrific. Thank you for giving the opportunity.